What I want to do now before we continue adding more function is to create the employee interface so that we can specify the type of data that this uh, requests are going to be returning. So I'm going to go back here and into the app folder. I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call it employee.ts. And then inside here, I'm just going to do export interface employee. Open and close curly braces. And here I'm just going to define all of the attributes that employee is going to have. So they're going to have an ID and that's going to be a number. They're going to have a name and that's going to be a string. And uh, they're also going to have an email. Uh, hopefully I can remember everything that I said in the back end. Uh, and I remember job title. So job title. And this is also a string. And they have a phone, which is a string. Uh, image URL, which is also a string. And then they have an employee code. I think this is everything that we set in the back. And then we can come back and change this if we forgot something. And this is also a string. So this represents the type of data that's going to be returning uh, whenever we make those calls to the back end because we're just technically mirroring what an employee looks like from the back end. So I'm just going to copy this and close it and collapse this. So now we can say, hey, this is going to return an observable of employee array. We can just pass in it like this and make sure we import employee from our class. And then down below, we can pass in the same type as well. It's explicitly clear what type of data that this is returning, which is an employee array for from a JavaScript perspective or from a Java perspective, that's just going to be a list or any type of collection. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and go down here and then paste it. And this is going to be add employee. And for this, it's going to take the actual employee that we're adding. So I'm going to do employee and that's going to be of type employee, which is our type that we just created. And this is going to return just one employee. So I'm going to re remove those uh, brackets. And here we just have to pass in the employee. So the URL, the base URL, which is this part of the URL is going to be the same, but this time it's going to go into employee.add. And then we have to pass in the payload, which is just the employee that we receive, which can be a second argument. And then here we just have to change this method from get to post, which is why it's complaining. And this is how we're going to make the post request to this URL and then pass in the payload in the body so that we can add that employee into the application in the back end. And I'm going to duplicate this one more time. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. And this one is going to be to update an employee. So I'm going to change this to update. And it's going to take an employee. It's going to return an employee. And it's going to go to update instead of add. So we're going to change this to update. And of course, in the body of the request, we're passing the employee to be updated. So all of this is good. And also, we have to change this from a post to a put because we're updating the data. And I'm going to duplicate this one more time. I'm going to go down here. And for this one, it's going to be the function to delete an employee. So I'm going to remove this update and then put delete. And to delete an employee, we need to pass in the actual employee ID. So I'm going to do employee ID. And the type for this is going to be a number. And whenever we delete an employee, we don't send any response back in the response body. We just send back the whole HTTP response with the status. So in this case, we can just say this is going to return void. And then we can change this to delete. And then, of course, we're not passing in this. We're just adding this ID as part of the URL itself. So here we can just go to the delete route and then forward slash um, that employee ID. And we can just pass this by just passing in the dollar sign, open and close curly braces, and then pass in the employee ID here as part of the URL. So this is pretty much everything. And as you can see, this is just a, a clear mirroring of whatever we have in the back end. So we can get all the employees by passing in a get request to that specific URL, which is employee slash all, and then update, you know, add and delete. So we can now use all those functions in our component so that we can update our UI appropriately, depending on what action the user is taking in the UI.